Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. This time I have a quick Photoshop tip for you. If you've ever found yourself in a situation where you've cropped one of your wildlife photos just a little bit too tight, this is the solution you've been looking for. It's super easy, super quick, and it looks great. In fact, we're going to do two different examples. The first one is a pretty easy example, and the second one is going to show you what to do when things get a little bit trickier. Let's take a look. So let's take this image for example. As you can see, we have a little sandhill crane colt. He was coming towards the camera and honestly, I was kind of in an awkward position while I was taking it. So you can see I've already cropped it to a four to five ratio. This is an eight by 10 ratio. This is kind of what I want for the shot. Unfortunately though, I feel like his foot is still a little bit close to this bottom edge here. I feel like if there was just a little bit more down here, it would be a better photo. But unfortunately, there was nothing here. I had everything up here and I cropped that part off, but it's still, I don't have anything down at the bottom. So I need to add some stuff there. And by the way, this is where this tip shines. This is where it's gonna work best. If you need just a little bit of extra space along an edge, it's not gonna work so well if for example, maybe I cropped too close to his head and I wanted all of this area up here. This is not going to work for stuff like that. This is if you just need to add just a little bit along an edge. So just to be clear about that. Now, our first step is to go to our layers palette and we need to make a composite layer that's basically a merged layer of all the stuff that happened underneath it. So in order to do that, we just hit Command, Option, Shift, and E if we're in a Mac or Control, Alt, Shift, and E if you happen to be using a Windows computer and that will create a composite layer that's basically emerging of all the layers that came before it. So that's the first step. So our next step is to expand the canvas down here just a little bit. And I think the easiest way to do that is with the crop tool. So I'm going to hit the crop tool. And we have some options here that we have to think about. There's a couple of ways to do this. The first is when you're in the crop tool, just make sure you don't have anything in the ratio boxes here. If there is, just hit clear and they'll go away. And then you can just drag whichever side is the problem. So I'm just going to drag this a little bit right about there. That's all I want. Just that little bit of space there. And I can do it that way. Then I can crop it to taste later. Now I happen to know that I do want a specific ratio for this image. So I'm not going to go this route. I'm going to hit escape. And instead I'm going to go back to the crop tool here, ratio, and I'm going to set in four to five like so. And then I'm going to come over to the image itself. Now, by the way, if you happen to see a cursor that looks like this instead of just the arrow you saw a moment ago, what's going to happen is if you try to move the image around on here, you're not going to be able to. As I do this, it just creates a, another crop there. So we don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to just click one of these handles so that I get this grid and I have just this normal looking arrow here. This is going to allow me to move this around. Now, what I also want to do here is I want to make sure that the sides stay and I'm only moving it up and down. So I'm going to start moving it down, but then as I start moving it up and down, not before, I'm going to hit the shift key and that will make it so it kind of sticks to the sides a little bit. Now this works left and right, up and down, whichever way you're going. But if you notice when I come off of it, I can come off the sides, but as it gets closer to the sides, it snaps in and that's what we want. That way we don't have to worry about being a pixel or two off on the left and right side in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that up holding the shift key down and I'm going to get the space that I want under there. And again, I'm not trying to do anything crazy here. I just need a little bit of extra space right here. And I want to watch this flower here. I feel like that's an important compositional element. I feel like it still has enough space there. So this looks good. I'm going to double click and I'm ready for the final step. Okay, so our next step is to fill in this blank area along the bottom. Obviously, we have to do something with that. And I know what you're thinking, content aware fill or cloning or something like that. I have a trick that works better and most of the time even looks a lot better. So what we're gonna do is go to the rectangular marquee tool. If you don't see it there, just give it a long press and you'll be able to choose it from the resulting menu here. But I'm gonna use the rectangular one here. That's the one you want. And what we wanna do is just select this area right in through here. We don't want his toe and we do want to get down into here. So we want to get all this vegetation here, but we don't want to get any part of the animal in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and go straight across. I'm just under his toe, as you can see, and I'm going to make sure that those marching ants are also in the blank area. That's very important or this will not work as you expect. So make sure you get those marching ants in the blank area. Next, we're going to hit Command or Control T, depending on whether you're a Windows or Mac user. That will activate the Transform tool, and the Transform tool is going to stick right to those marching ants, as you can see right there. 
Now we're gonna drag this down and basically stretch this area out. Okay, so before we pull it though, I do wanna mention the shift key because it's going to sometimes come into play, sometimes not. If you're using an older version of Photoshop or you have the aspect ratio turned off on a newer version, if you have this little lock up here set like that, you can just pull this straight down and not think twice about it. However, if this is locked as it is by default, you'll need to hold your shift key down as you pull. Basically what you don't want to have happen is something like this, where it goes left and right like that. You don't want that. So what we want to do is hold our shift key down if we see that and just pull it straight down like this. But when we do that, you can see what happens. I'm gonna double click this, hit Command or Control D to deselect, and you can see we have expanded that grass, we've pulled it down, but it looks completely natural. He now has plenty of space to walk into, it doesn't feel so tight, the composition looks instantly better, and if we zoom in, you can see there's no seams, no lines, everything looks absolutely perfect. And honestly, this only takes a few seconds to do most of the time. It takes a lot longer to explain it and go over the details than it does to actually implement it, but it can definitely help you out and I sure hope it does. Okay, so let's look at a little bit more advanced example next. And in this case, what happens when you have the animal's part, in this case the tail, what happens if you have part of the animal that's so close to the edge that you don't really have any space to work with like we had with the little colt a moment ago? Well, in that case, we're just gonna take part of that area with us and do some cloning. So once again, we want to create a composite layer, Command, Option, Shift, and E for me, and Control, Alt, Shift, and E if you're a Windows user. And we're gonna make that new layer right there. And what we're gonna do is grab the crop tool again, and I'm gonna pull this down in this case, right there. I'm not worried about aspect ratios this time, and just kind of make it comfortable right there. That looks pretty good. There we go, and now, once again, I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee, but this time I'm not gonna worry about keeping the animal out of the frame. In fact, I'm gonna go from this side so I can take a nice big swath here. Once again, making sure my marching ants are getting into the blank area down here. Now, as a quick side note, this was a relatively higher ISO image. So I did noise reduction first. You always wanna do noise reduction first before you do this little trick because as you're pulling this down, what's going to happen is if there's noise in there, it's gonna look a lot worse in the area that you adjusted there than the area that you added because you're basically making things look bigger. So you don't want your noise to look bigger. So do your noise reduction first. So Command or Control T, and then I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, pull this down, give it a double click, Command or Control D, and there we go. But his tail looks, what's the word for it? Ridiculous, right? So what we wanna do is put a layer mask in here and fix that. So I'm gonna put a layer mask right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint black and I'm going to conceal this area right here and then I'm gonna fix it with a clone stamp. So if you're a Photoshop user, you know black conceals and white reveals. If you're not, then you're about to learn it. So I'm gonna paint with black on this layer mask. I have the layer mask selected and I'm just gonna come down here and figure out where his real tail ends and where the new one begins. There we go right in through there. I'm gonna use maybe a little bit bigger brush here and blend that a little nicer. There we go. That looks pretty good. And that's what I need right there. So I'm gonna zoom in. And what I wanna do here, a little spider web right there, but what I wanna do here is I just wanna clone this area here and just fix this area. So I'm going to put a new layer. I always clone on a new layer. You can even rename it if you want. You can double click and call it clone. I'll do that here for us. I usually am a little sloppier than that, I'll admit it. As a quick side note, if you are working on a separate layer for cloning like I do, when you have your clone stamp selected, make sure you go to sample and make sure either all layers or current and below are chosen there. Otherwise, if it's just on the current layer, you're not gonna actually be cloning anything. So I use all layers. That's the one that seems to work well for me. I'm gonna grab the clone stamp tool over here, give that a click. And then I'm gonna clone this area here, down here. This looks like it's a pretty good match. And I'm not super concerned if I touch the tail because I can still go ahead and put a layer mask in there and clean that up here in a moment. Right now, I just wanna get this area so that it looks good. There we go. Maybe a little bit bigger there. and zoom out. I always like to zoom out and just kind of double check, make sure it looks okay. I think that's good enough for our demonstration purposes. And it looks like I might need a little bit more clone stamp action. I get right in through here. 
There we go. Now, as you'll notice, I did get into the tail a little bit, and that's perfectly fine because we're going to put another layer mask in here, grab our brush tool again, and we're going to paint with black, and that's going to cover up those clone areas that I just did. Oops. There we go. I'm just going to come in here, get that original tail back. And if you go too far, you can always hit X and kind of reverse out of there. Go to white so that I'm letting that go come through again. But anyhow, that's basically the gist of it there. It's actually pretty easy. And now I think that's it. There we go. And now, just like that, we have expanded the canvas underneath and we have plenty of room for his tail. So if you happen to have an animal with part of the animal that's a little bit too close, you can chop into that if you really need to and then do a little bit of work afterwards. It's not really that hard to do as you can see here. So hopefully you find that useful too. If you enjoyed these tips, you'll absolutely love my educational materials that I have on my site. I have a ton of video workshops. I have a lot of eBooks over there, tons of information, literally like thousands of tips and tricks and techniques. So make sure you head over to the site and check those out. Also, I'd love it if you'd sign up for my free email newsletter. That way you'll never miss a video, blog post, or any of the other cool stuff that I do. And finally, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.